Well, the fortunate thing is I didn't have many larger contributors, and the only reason... See, I went to the big guys for the money. I was ready to prostitute myself in the, man, in the manner in which I talk about it. But what happened was they said, come back when you're 40, son. And so I had to go out. So I had to go to a number of small contributors. Well, I, I, I think... You know, I'm like the token black. I got hot. I got a lot of... I got hairy legs that turn... That, 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 that turn... Uh, uh, um, blonde in the sun and the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight and then watch the hair come back up again they look at it so I learned about roaches I learned about kids jumping on my lap and I've loved kids jumping on my lap don't jump don't jump. When I march in the civil rights movement, I march with tens of thousands of others to change attitudes. But he never actually marched in the civil rights movement. So I take a back seat to no one on my progressive values. Bobby Rush, member of Congress, said the other day, I'm ashamed that I voted for the 94 crime bill. You ashamed of that bill? Not at all. Um, and in fact, I drafted the bill, as you remember. I know that. And so I take a back seat to no one on my progressive values. Biden's 1994 crime bill helped fuel mass incarceration with financial incentives to keep people behind bars. You ashamed of that bill? Not at all. And so I take a back seat to no one on my progressive values. Biden is also known for close ties to the financial industry, notably helping push through a 2005 bill that made it harder for consumers to declare bankruptcy. And so I take a back seat to no one on my progressive values. According to The New York Times, the credit card ins issuer, MBNA, was Biden's top donor from 1989 to 2010. And so I take a back seat to no one on my progressive values. The Obama administration seeking to repeal one of his key legislative achievements. The White House wants to undo a provision in the 2005 bankruptcy law that made it harder to reduce student debt, preventing most Americans from claiming bankruptcy protections for private student loans. In its bid to rescind the measure, the Department of Education says Biden's legislation left, quote, private student loan borrowers in financial distress with few options. And so I take a back seat to no one on my progressive value. How pivotal Joe Biden was in pushing these laws to, again, make it more difficult for students to reduce their student debt when they are in bankruptcy court. It really puts a prohibition on the judges themselves saying you really can't lower student debt like you can most other forms of debt when you are in bankruptcy court. And so I take a back seat to no one on my progressive values. No one. It doesn't matter whether or not they were deprived as a youth. It doesn't matter whether or not they're the victims of society. The end result is they're about to knock my mother on the head with a lead pipe, shoot my sister, beat up my wife, take on my sons. So I don't want to ask what made them do this. They must be taken off the street. That's number one. There's a consensus on that. Young people, tens of thousands of them, born out of wedlock, without parents, without supervision, without any structure, without any conscience developing. The younger generation now tells me how tough things are. Give me a break. <laughs> no, no. I have no empathy for it. Give me a break. Without any conscience developing. In America, we never bow, we never bend, we never kneel, we never yield. We own the finish line. That's who he we said, are. And I quote, when you talk about mental health problems, when people come back from war and combat, they see things that maybe a lot of folks in this room have seen many times over. And then he points out to the veterans in the room and he says, and you're strong, you can handle it, but a lot of people can't handle it. Where in the hell is he from? No, 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 this is deadly earnest. My son spent a year in Iraq, came back a highly decorated veteran, bronze star and a lot, of el a lot else. I've been in and out of Iraq and Afghanistan over 29 times. I found myself in Iraq being asked by 
General Oriano, a four-star, to pin a silver medal on a young captain who had pulled someone out of a burning Humvee, risking his life. And when I went to pin it on him in front of the entire brigade, he stood at me, looked at me, said, Sir, I don't want the medal. I don't want the medal. You know why? He said, he died. He died, Mr. Vice President. I don't want the medal. How many nights does that kid go to sleep? Seeing that image in his head, dealing with it. I have a card I carry with me, my schedule. Every single day, I have my staff contact the Defense Department early in the morning. There's a black box in the bottom of it. And it lists U.S. daily troop update. U.S. troops died in Afghanistan and Iraq. 6,753, not plus 6,000, not 6,700, 6,753. Because every one of those warriors left behind an entire family, a community, for us. Every one of them. 52,419 wounded. But as the veteran can tell you, over 200,000 coming home with unseen wounds. <laughs> 20 suicides a month. I don't think he was trying to be mean. He is just so thoroughly, completely uninformed. For years, Joe Biden has been recounting a story of American heroism and heartbreak on the front lines, recently telling a crowd in New Hampshire how he traveled to Afghanistan to pin a silver star on a young Navy captain. One of his buddies got shot, fell down a ravine about 60 feet. This guy climbed down a ravine, carried this guy up on his back under fire. Who had pulled someone out of a burning Humvee. And the general wanted me to pin the silver star on him. I found myself in Iraq being asked by General Oriano, a four-star, to pin a silver medal. And then a moving moment as Biden approached with the medal. I said, God's truth, my word is a Biden. He stood at attention. I went to pin him. I said, sir, I don't want the damn thing. Do not pin it on me, sir. Please, sir, do not do that. He died. He died. And when I went to pin it on him in front of the entire brigade, he stood at me, looked at me, said, sir, I don't want the medal. I don't want the medal. You know why? He said he died. But the Washington Post dug into the story and determined Biden got the time period, the location, the heroic act, the type of medal, the military branch, and the rank of the recipient wrong, as well as his own role in the ceremony. When I heard the vice president of the United States, someone I grew up admiring, someone I've been on platforms with, when I heard him go to Danville, Virginia, and talk about politics in a way that no serious candidate ought to talk about it, when I heard him reach to the bottom of the deck and talk about one party putting people in chains, when I heard someone that I admired and have been on platforms with talk about uh, ordinary conservative principles as being essentially racial uh, viciousness, because that's the allegation he was making yesterday, uh, I was disappointed by it, but I have to tell you, it brought back memories to me. It brought back memories of these Democratic politicians in the South who think they can go before black crowds and say one thing, that nobody else will hear it, and that they can somehow get a cheer in the room, and that they can blithely go on about their business. I happen to have spoken to a few African-American audiences in my time, uh, represent a predominantly African-American district. Uh, I know what Joe Biden was doing yesterday. And every black person in that room knew who the y'all was. They knew what the chains were about. They knew what the metaphor was. And I will give that audience credit. If you listen to a tape of that audience, you actually hear what appear to be boos or what appears to be shock from some people in that audience. That says a lot that is very good about people in that audience, that when Joe Biden went to a place he never should have gone, that instead of getting the cheers he just knew he'd get, he got a negative reaction from a lot of the African Americans in the room. That doesn't lift up Joe Biden or excuse his comments, but it says something positive about the people in that audience. It's a divisive tactic that's insulting to African Americans. 
It's insulting to the American people. People would come to him and talk about what was happening at home in terms of foreclosures, in terms of bad loans that were being, I mean, these Shylocks who took advantage of, uh, of these women and men while overseas. Oh, boy. <laughs> there you go again, Joe. Uh, Shylock it specifically refers to Jewish bankers who take advantage of you. Don't do that. Don't do that. I want to come to you and talk to you about inequality in schools and race. In a conversation about how to deal with segregation in schools back in 1975, you told a reporter, I don't feel responsible for the sins of my father and grandfather. I feel responsible for what the situation is today, for the sins of my own generation. And I'll be damned if I feel responsible to pay for what happened 300 years ago. You said that some 40 years ago. But as you stand here tonight, what responsibility do you think that Americans need to take to repair the legacy of slavery in our country? Well, they have to deal with the, the look, there is institutional segregation in this country. And from the time I got involved, I started dealing with that. Redlining, banks, making sure that we are in a position where, look, we talk about education. I propose that what we take is those very poor schools, the Title I schools, triple the amount of money we spend from 15 to 45 billion a year, give every single teacher a raise of the equal raise of getting out of the, the $60,000 level. Number two, make sure that we bring in to the help the, the, student, the, the teachers deal with the problems that come from home. The problems that come from home, we need, we have one school psychologist for every 1,500 kids in America today. It's crazy. The teachers are required, I'm married to a teacher, my deceased wife is a teacher. They have every problem coming to them. We have to make sure that every single child does, in fact, have three, four, and five-year-olds go to school. School, not daycare, school. We bring social workers into homes of parents to help them deal with how to raise their children. It's not that they don't want to help. They don't, want, they don't know quite what to do. Play the radio. Make sure the television, the, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night, the, the, the phone. Make sure the kids hear words. A kid coming from a very poor school, or a very poor background, will hear four million words fewer spoken by the time they get there. There's Thank so you, much we, no, I'm, I'm going to go like the rest of them do. I come out of the black community in terms of my support. If you notice, I have more people supporting me in the black community that have announced for me because they know me. They know who I am. Three former chairs of the Black Caucus, the only African-American woman that ever been elected to the United States Senate. A whole range of people. No, My point no, is, that's not true. true. The other that's one is true. here. Is it, is it? <laughs> no, I said the first. Thank I said the first African-American elected. Come on. The first African-American. <laughs>